Greetings, I am as always Mr. Grimmer Fallen 2 and welcome to another edition of Brit from the Silver Screen. I'm going to go out of the loan this time without my uh, buddy, Dark Knight 97. He'll join me later on uh, for some other reviews. But right now, uh, we're going to talk about Trick or Treat. Now, Trick or Treat is directed by Michael Doherty, produced by Brian Singer, written by Michael Doherty. It stars Dylan Baker, Rochelle I, uh, Adas, Anna, Anna Paquin, and Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, basically, this film is a horror anthology. Uh, centering around um, excuse me uh, excuse me uh, let's see here um, so yeah this the film takes place uh, over the course of Halloween so we're going to take a look we're going to talk about this and uh, I'll give you guys my thoughts on trick or treat so here we go uh the film takes place over the course of Halloween in the fictional town of Warren Valley, Ohio. Its story is told in non-linear narrative, with characters crossing paths with each other throughout the film. At the center of the story is Sam, a peculiar trick-or-treater dressed in pajamas and a burlap sack, who appears to enforce the rules of Halloween. The opening scene, Emma and her husband... Henry returned home from after a disastrous night. Emma tears down uh, the seasonal decorations before the night's end and is murdered by an unseen assailant. Henry later discovers her mutilated corpse on display. Next, Charlie, an obese vandal, smashes jack lanterns and encounters his school principal, Stephen Wilkins. Wilkins lectures uh, Charlie on how the rules and traditions of Halloween must be obeyed. Charlie suddenly vomits up poison candy. Wilkins' uh, chocolate spiked with cyanide. Uh, Wilkins tries burying Charlie and another child in his backyard, but is repeatedly interrupted by his son, Billy, and neighbor, Mr. Krieg, an elderly, scarred recluse. Uh, yeah, an elderly, scarred recluse. Uh, Wilkins later takes Charlie's head indoors so he and Billy can carve a jack lantern out of it. Ooh. Okay, so next. Elsewhere, a group of trick or treaters, Macy, Sarah, Chip, and Schrader, meet Rhonda, an enthusiastic Halloween fanatic said to be a savant. The group travel to a local quarry where Macy recalls the urban legend of a Halloween school bus massacre. The legend is depicted in flashback of Macy explaining that eight mentally challenged children died in a school bus on Halloween. The driver had been paid by the parents to dispose of them and was the only survivor of the crash. <clears throat> The trick-or-treaters offer eight jack-lanterns as tribute to the dead children. They pull a prank on Rhonda, posing as zombies, but only, terri only terrify her. An annoyed Macy kicks one of the lanterns in the quarry's lake, causing the dead children to rise themselves as zombies. The group flee, but Rhonda reaches the elevator first and leaves them to die. She briefly encounters Sam whilst leaving. <clears throat> okay, so... This will be the next story here. Lori, a self-conscious young woman, arrives in town with her sister Danielle and friends Maria and Janet. They pick up dates, save Lori, who wants her first time to be special. Lori eventually encounters a hooded sexual predator dressed as a vampire who attacks her. At a bonfire, Lori's friends witness the man falling out of a tree and a masked him, revealed to be Wilkins. Lori appears... And the girls transform into werewolves, devouring Wilkins and their dates. Sam witnesses the feast. <clears throat> During the same time Wilkins is harvesting Charlie, Creek scares away children to steal their candy, aided by his dog Spite. Sam breaks into his house, decorating with Halloween memorabilia. 
Sam unmasked as demonic pumpkin-headed child attacks Krieg. However, when Sam tries to kill Krieg, he instead eats a chocolate bar that landed in Krieg's lap. Satisfied that Krieg offered him candy, Sam leaves. Photographs in the fireplace reveal Krieg to be the bus driver, who you guys remember from the, another story, was responsible for the murder of those kids. <sighs> <coughs> Later, Krieg begins giving out candy to children. He observes Sam watching Emma and Henry going to exact revenge when Emma blows out, of, out a jack lantern. Krieg returns inside only to receive a knock on the door. He opens it, revealing the undead children waiting for him. The final comic book like shots of the film show Krieg being dismembered. Alright, so that is. The movie, in a nutshell, um, it is seven. It is uh, four, four uh, stories, all surrounding all surrounding Halloween and all surrounding this little boy Sam. Um, I loved all these stories. I loved all four of them. Um, I think the principal getting what was coming to him was a really really good treat. Uh, there was some stuff, there was some stuff here that I liked a lot. <clears throat> um, the story about the little kids, uh, who were, who were, uh, who went, who had to go down into quarry, um, and getting butchered by these, uh, dead children. Um, that was very satisfying. <laughs> Um, yeah, Trick or Treat is a very good horror film, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, there was some funny moments in this. There was some really, really enjoyable moments in this. Um, Anna Paquin, uh, who plays one of the werewolf uh, chicks, the, uh, the she-wolves, um, was really good. Um, yeah, I think this film, as far as everything else goes, I think this film was really good. I love the stories, all four of them. Um, <clears throat> including the one about, uh, Krieg, uh, who was played by, let me see if I remember correctly, who, oh, Brian Cox. Um, but yeah, this movie is a really good movie. I enjoyed it. Um, when the girls, the scariest moment for me is when the girls become werewolves. You get to see them transform into werewolves and just, uh, dismember these dudes. Dismember their, uh... <clears throat> And there's some there's some references uh, to each of the stories where there's there's a part where they um, the little kids meet up with this woman who looks like a cat and who is dressed up like a cat, and she tells them she tells them that uh, if I remember right, she tells them that the um, to not. Uh, not stay out too late because there's horrors around and stuff like that. And I think she was referring to the wolves, the she wolves, um, and stuff like that. But yeah, there was a bunch of stuff that I liked. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff that I thought was really good too. Um, and yeah, uh, much like Tales from the Hood, which was another good horror anthology. And Tales of Halloween, which is another one, another, another really good one. I'm going to get to that later on uh, down the line. Um, <clears throat> I think Trick or Treat was a really good one. What they did with the, what they did with Sam, when Sam unmasks himself and you see this demon child um, and stuff like that. I like what they did with the makeup and all that. Uh, and uh, But yeah. 
I thought Halloween, I thought Trick or Treat is a good anthology film. If you love horror and you love laughing your ass off, watch this film because it's a really good movie. That's why <clears throat> you're asking Grim, what'd you give it? I give it a 10 out of 10. You damn right I'm going to do it. Trick or Treat is an amazing film. I don't, I don't know why. I, I think this film got really, really bad. Um, oh, it was at eight three percent. Okay, cool. All right. But even so, I think this movie is still a cult classic, um, and it's still it's still a good movie. So. <clears throat> If you guys, yeah, like I said, if you guys, if you guys like horror and all that and all that stuff, all that good shit, watch this film. Like I said, um, but yeah, that, that about I think that about covers it as far as the review goes and everything else. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of Trick or Treat. Uh, that's gonna be it for me. I'm Mr. Grand Phone Two, and I'll see you all in the afterlife. Peace and happy Halloween.